This is an ad for the Russian military. This is an ad for the Chinese military. And this is an ad for the almighty American military. This is the story of a soldier who operates your nation's Patriot missile defense systems. It begins in California with a little girl raised by two moms. Although I had a fairly typical childhood, took ballet, played violin, I also marched for equality. I like to think I've been defending freedom from an early age. So yeah, the US military is in a bit of a pickle. A military needs to recruit strong, tough warriors that are willing to die for their country. And that's exactly the kind of energy Russia's and China's military ads are tapping into. This already looks fucking gonna- this is gonna be wild, bro. Look at him. This motherfucker will literally stab you in the face. But America's military ads? They're not trying to recruit the strong. They're not trying to recruit the brave. No, they're trying to recruit the diverse. Recruiting and retaining a more diverse army is the goal. So diversity is very important to us. The all-volunteer military has reached crisis levels of low recruitment, while at the same time, the American public's perception of the armed forces is increasingly divided. A recent Gallup poll found confidence in the U.S. military is at its lowest level in over two decades. Only 60% of people told Gallup they had confidence in the U.S. military. At the same time, some military branches are falling short of their yearly recruiting goals by the thousands. The Army is set to fall 15,000 recruits short this year. So yeah, needless to say, the U.S. military is running out of soldiers. In fact, the U.S. military has not had this much trouble getting new recruits since the Vietnam War ended. I love the U.S. military. It is a fantastic institution. Well, anything that has that much money thrown at it can develop a lot of bad habits mm -hmm. and become like an obese triathlete. And the soldiers they do have? Well, when you ask them why they joined the military, half of them give good answers, but the other half of them answer with something like this. Why did you join the army? Why did you join the army? I don't know. For money. For money. Huh? For money. Why did you join the army? Free food. But why should you even care about this? You should care about this because whenever the military of any country has this much trouble getting new recruits, especially when that country is prone to getting into wars, once a big war does break out, you can bet that a draft is right around the corner. Stay dangerous and let's get into it. In 1996, two authors named Neil Howe and William Strauss published a very scary book that predicted exactly where we're at today called The Fourth Turning. And this book perfectly explains why the US military is in trouble today. In the book, the authors explain that history is not random. History doesn't happen randomly in a straight line. No, over the past 500 years, Anglo-American history has repeated itself in very well-defined cycles of 80 to 100 years. These 80 to 100 year cycles are called seculums. And each of these cycles or seculums are made up of four turnings of around two decades each. The first turning in the cycle is a high, an upbeat era where there's opportunity, unity, trust in the government, you believe in the nation, and there's a new civic order that has just replaced the old regime. 
And overall, things are just great. Think of the end of World War II. People loved the country, they trusted the government, people were having kids, they were proud to be American, they were buying houses left and right, it was America's golden years. But then comes the second turning, which we call the awakening. This is when a lot of people get alienated by the status quo. You don't trust the government as much anymore. You start fighting back and resisting the status quo. Think of the hippie movement, the racial movements, and the social justice protests of the 60s and 70s. And this awakening eventually paves the way to the third turning, the unraveling. In the unraveling, society feels like it's going downhill. Corruption in institutions starts running rampant, so people naturally trust the government and institutions less. People naturally become more individualistic. And in the unraveling, the seed is planted for a new civic order to take over. And so this leads us into the climax with the fourth turning, which we call the crisis. This moment in history, the crisis is exactly what it sounds like. People aren't proud to be American anymore. They really don't trust the government anymore. As corruption is so blatant, it's insulting. We feel more entitled as individuals, more self-centered. While at the same time, we feel like the future looks really, really bleak for the next generation. It feels like there's just too many things to fix, so we just live in denial. Until some sort of revolution happens. This revolution can be peaceful or violent, but either way, the old civic order gets replaced with a new one, and thus the 80 to 100 year cycle starts all over again. So if you felt any of this that I just described, if you feel the anxiety in the air, the bleakness about the future, you are not alone. Because this is exactly where we're supposed to be at. This is where we are in the seculum. We're going to have a full video on this soon, by the way, so subscribe. And this is also the environment that the US military finds itself in right now. And yet the US military seems completely oblivious to all of this. Back in the day, nobody knew what war really entailed, until they were on the ground and it was too late to turn around. But today, millennials and Gen Z know exactly how brutal life as a soldier can be. They grew up watching war movies. They grew up through the wars in the Middle East. They've heard the horror stories from veterans about PTSD, depression, anxiety, or worse. And pretty much everyone knows about how poorly they treat veterans once they do come home. Well, the most difficult part about coming home was getting off the ship in the middle of the night of San Francisco and they just said, go home. I mean, what do you mean, go home? I said, well, yeah. I said, well, how am I supposed to get home from here to Ventura? And this is about, oh God, maybe one or two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, in the middle of the night, we walked approximately, I would say maybe five miles to get to Highway 80. And so then I hitchhiked from there and uh, they gave us our discharge, that was it. They never told you, uh, you know, get checked for, or anything else like that. So I, I've had uh, the ringing in my ears uh, since 1952. When these guys are on 15 and 20 different medications a day, it's no wonder the suicide rate is 20 some a day. It's it's grotesque and wrong and just flat out evil. The invent, the basically the warehousing of the people that served America. Eh, forget about those guys. Just put them on drugs and pay them something to sit at home. Every human being wants to know that they're adding value. And here's the thing, tying back to what we talked about earlier. This would be worth it if soldiers actually felt like they were making a positive difference in the world. But today, everyone knows how BS these wars are. Heck, even veterans that gave their blood, sweat, and tears are now looking back at the wars they fought with doubts. In fact, take a listen to Travis Haley, a legendary war hero that runs a company called Haley Strategic today that I really respect. The other thing is, oh, you fought Dick Cheney's war. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, you fought for the military industrial complex, 9-11, uh, conspiracy, all these things. So if you are one of those conspiracy theorists and you think that it was Dick Cheney's war, Bush's war, um, to, to simply make money. You know, what they say Halliburton made $48 billion and took advantage of hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money. If you think that Al-Qaeda had nothing to do with Saddam Hussein's um, regime, if you think uh, that 9-11 was, was not tied to that whatsoever, and, and the list goes on and on and on, all the conspiracies out there, I believe you are absolutely, unequivocally, without a doubt, correct. And if this is the general consensus of what everyone believes in, why would you ever want to sign up for that? Why would you ever want to die in a meaningless war? And then there's the pay.
when there's no unifying mission to get people to join the military, for example like the Nazis or something, most kids that do join the military will still join for the benefits. They'll join for the pay, for the chance to get a college degree, for a reliable salary, or benefits for the family. Why'd you join the army? Because I was broke. But even that isn't looking as attractive anymore. With minimum wages rising and a whole new range of work opportunities that weren't there before, what is the point of joining the military? The army only pays a starting salary of $23,000. That's $5,000 less than what Chick-fil-A pays for their lowest earning new team members. So if you can make more money working at a fast food restaurant without having to leave your home, without having to get yelled at, without having to potentially die, once again, why would this generation ever pick the military? If we don't turn our recruiting situation around, I can't guarantee you that the Army won't have to make some more substantial potential for structure reductions uh, because we, we've got to make sure that our units, for example, that are on the immediate response force are manned adequately so that they're ready to go. And then, of course, there are the ads. Here's the thing, conservative Americans have always been the military's biggest recruitment base, and yet the military is completely ignoring them. Instead, the military is trying to rebrand themselves as an inclusive institution thinking that this is what's going to attract a new demographic of Americans to serve. When in reality, all they did was alienate the only group of people they had a shot of recruiting in the first place. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to talk about this military recruiting video. I, I just, it, it, it just balls my blood. And for those of you not from Texas, ball me, boil. It balls my blood to see the stupidity in our country. This is the story of a soldier who operates your nation's Patriot missile defense systems. Missiles in cartoon forms. That makes me think of kids, not grown it men or women. In California. I'm U.S. Army Corporal Emma Malone Lord, and I answered my calling. We're screwed, people. You get it? You get it? Like, can you imagine that Russian guy? coming up against that girl. No offense to that girl. No offense to her lesbian mothers. No offense to the marching. No offense to equality. No offense to any of that. But if you give me a, you know, East Village lesbian versus Vladimir Putin, who's gonna win? What are we doing? What are we doing? None of the big tough guys that you want protecting the country are going to be inspired by a cartoon about lesbian moms. But out of all this recruiting chaos, there is still one branch that does not have a recruiting problem. Many will hear the calling, few will earn the title, United States Marine. Even though the rest of the military is sinking, the Marines are still going strong and hitting their recruitment numbers without any problems. What is the difference? You know, seeing the, the recruiting problems that the Army and the Navy have, Marine Corps doesn't. But what's the difference in the Marine Corps recruiting? I, I think anybody that served can tell the difference between Marine Corps recruiting ads versus the other services. Because the Marine Corps says, we're standing on this wall for the last 250 years, and maybe if you're good enough, you can join us. Versus, hey, join up and we're going to pay for college, and the living conditions are great, and we have excellent golf courses. That's not why warriors join the military. These Marine Corps ads go hard. The future is threatened by enemies often unrelenting, unexpected and unpredictable. Stay alert, Marines. In the midst of an uncertain and evolving world, the need for Marines to defeat these shifting threats is critical. I mean, just look at this ad. It sums it up perfectly. Four crew, four mechanics on the ship, job done. The Navy did that with two helicopters and 70 guys. That's how many they had to put on that ship because they viewed all those bodies as a free good. And for every, sorry, no, it was two helicopters and 35 guys. And then they had another 70 plus people back in stateside waiting to rotate. So the, the costs of doing that mission to, to keep two helicopters fielded was basically the Navy was two helicopters and a hundred people that are on their payroll to do that. Very easy to do apples to apples comparison of who is cheaper. There's lots of market-based reforms that can be done to make the military wake up. 
So that is why the Marines are succeeding compared to the other branches. If I was ever the Secretary of Defense, I would hire the head of training from Chick-fil-A. If you've not been through a Chick-fil-A drive through witness what Chick-fil-A managed to do with, with high school kids in organizing them into a NASCAR style pit crew of flow. That's impressive. And so there's a lot of lessons that can be learned and imposed and, in, and implemented uh, across the military. But even if you fix this marketing problem, there is still one more major problem remaining. Most American citizens don't qualify for the military even if they wanted to serve. According to the Pentagon, over three quarters, over 75% of adults aged 17 to 24 are too obese to qualify, or they suffer from a physical or mental condition that makes them not qualify. That is a huge problem. But then there's also a big portion of the population that does qualify, but they have a pesky little criminal record that bans them from serving, or they can't pass a drug test. Even a tattoo in the wrong place can completely destroy your chances of serving in the military. So until we go into a new 80 to 100 year cycle again, like what we talked about earlier, where people trust the government and believe in the nation again, if America gets dragged into another giant war or even a world war, which seems kind of likely right now, the military really only has one option left to fix this problem, a draft. Yes, that is right. The United States has not had a military draft in over 50 years, but that doesn't mean it's off the table. Just like how Israel has a military draft. As you all know, the recent attack on Israel was absolutely horrifying. But there are a lot of holes in the official narrative. Was it a coincidence that before the attack happened, Israel was going through extreme civil unrest? Was it a coincidence that Israel's leader Netanyahu was in the midst of standing trial for corruption and that his popularity was at an all-time low? Was it a coincidence that days before the attack happened, Egypt had warned Israel of quote something big and yet Israel ignored their warning? Was it a coincidence that one of the most heavily guarded, heavily fortified border walls in the world could not stop hundreds of attackers as they blew holes through the wall and went through it? Was it a coincidence that one of the most militarized countries in the world that is only the size of New Jersey where they have a mandatory draft could not respond to the attack for six long hours? Was it a coincidence that once the attack was over hours later, those same attackers were able to retreat back to Palestine through those same holes that they blew in the heavily guarded border wall? Was all this really just one big coincidence? Well, we try to answer that in our new emergency private documentary that you can watch right now by clicking the card on the screen. This YouTube membership is reserved for videos that are just too controversial to be posted publicly exactly like this one. We still have another private documentary coming out within like a week or so on if a certain German leader with a small mustache actually offed himself. So click the card on the screen to watch now.